All right, everybody, welcome in to the Winner's Lounge. I'm live from the press box here at DSGP, joined by Yahir G. Vasquez. What's up, my brother? Happy, man. That was a dope win. That was a really fun game to watch. It was just in, uh, it, just in general. It was like fun to watch if you're a Rapids fan. It was full on domination. It felt like it was pretty much a a good, a solid, too good to great performance at every single level for the Rapids tonight. Defense looked great. Uh, Yarborough clean sheet number two. Uh, Rubio another goal. Mac breakout game. I mean, where do you want to start? There's like ten different ways we could go here. Uh, probably Mac. I saw you tweeting about Mac earlier. Um, what do you see from him tonight? That was the funnest Mac game I've seen, man. His he was really creative with his passes, doing a little back heel here and there. He was his touch was really crisp, and then that goal he had was just like cherry on top. It was a really fun game from him all night. I felt like that was the best game he's played as a rapid, honestly. He definitely found a flow that he hasn't had so far this season. I thought. Um, his passes were creative, his touches were intentional, um, and that finish was like a hockey-style tip to put it in the back of the net, and the place just went nuts. The C38 guys were losing it. You, I kind of zoomed in on my camera phone, and, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a great moment to see. He needed a, a, a he needed a performance. It's been four games where I say he hasn't. I don't know if any of them were bad, but definitely none of them were good so far. And this was one where he was. He was the player that we were talking about in the preseason that this guy is, is the next guy for the Rapids. Yeah, everything went through him through the middle. I think Jack Price had a great game, um, yep. but I really do think that everything really was thanks to uh, Mac. Everything he did throughout the game just kept leading to chances again and again. Um, kind of looking, I think he had, looking at his stats, he wasn't, according to... Uh, According to Foot Mob, he was a mm-hmm. eight point forty nine rating today. Let's that's go. the highest I mean, on the team. Yeah, and it showed. It showed he was he was present in really every major uh, you know push that they had. Uh, yeah, I mean, is this is this? Now you just hope is this can this be sustained? Is this some, you know was this the breaking point where it's like okay he found his groove he he's figured out how to play off of Price with, with the two midfielders. Um, which I thought was interesting. This is the second week in a row we've seen that, where it's mm-hmm. him and Price in the midfield and the three up top above him. Um, and uh, I don't know. I, I you know, if, if this is the breakout for Mac, man, it's uh, you know, you put the rest of the league on alert, right? I mean, it's with this defense and Yarborough keeping keeping everybody out of the goal and Mac playing like that. It's scary. And also, the defense held up really well for having kind of mishmash a little bit, having like. Oh, yeah. Not having Danny Wilson in there and then having Lucas get out of there at towards the end of the game, I thought they played really well all, all the way around. I thought yeah, it was a really good point, performance all the way around. Yeah, absolutely. At one point they had three guys, three regular. Well, you know, Beta Shore, you can you can call it regular just because he's in the rotation, but you have three guys playing in different positions on that back line than they're used to playing, and it uh, it worked. Keegan did a great job filling in for Lawless, who was filling in for uh, Wilson, and you had. Beta Shore playing both sides after some subs, and uh, I think I think it looked really good. Um, I saw that tweet from you earlier. I thought that was a really, really good tweet. I'm like, if there's any way to explain this back line, that's the perfect way to explain it today. Yeah, it, it, you know, everyone, it was next man up, you know, and, I, and I'm sure they'll talk about that. Someone will ask about that in the post-match with, with Robin Frazier later, but it uh, – his game plans and his rotations have been on point so far this year. Yeah, man. I thought Frazier played um, – he played that beta, beta shore on that right side. Was it the right – was it on the yeah. right side, right? He played him on the mm-hmm. right side and was having yeah, him push up. Season. Yeah, yep. and he was, like, pushing up the whole game. I thought that was such mm-hmm. a smart move because beta shore that played that right side perfectly, man. He was a great yeah. compliment to uh, Barrio's all game, I thought, on the offensive side. Yeah. Um, I know we have a little bit of mixed feelings on Barrio's. Um, he just had a couple of mistakes where I saw that yeah. I was like, come on, what are you doing? You've had a good game. But obviously the one-on-one where it was right after the Rubio goal could have made it 2-0 early and, and yeah. put the game away. you got to finish that. That's, I mean, come on. Yeah. That's, you got to finish that. And then 
late on a, you know, on a clearance. I think it was after either a set piece or a corner from Kansas City and kind of got a little too cute with it and tried to pass out of the, out of the back in trouble and just turned it over and gave them another opportunity. Um, that's the one that, like, that, yeah, that's yeah. the one that stuck in my head the most. That little back pass and it was like to nobody, yeah. you were like in no man's land. Yeah, that's... and it just set up another cross for Casey. And luckily, Casey was completely toothless in their attack tonight. Um, Johnny Russell sucks, man. He's been Yo, he's I mean, not what? good. He has not been good this year, at least. He is. Well, I mean, coming in, he only had 0.1 XG on the season. And tonight, I would be shocked if he added to that. I um, can tell you what his expected because for the today it, was. They're in trouble over there. It's uh, yo. I hope the Hamburglar isn't watching, or maybe I do hope he's watching. Um, Let him talk your shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, you get, Robin. You know, you knew he'd be on his defense. You knew he'd keep that five, two, three, five, three, two. Three, five, whatever it is, that very defensive formation. I mean, the season without the attack, and and aside from Vela going off in the opener, it's been pretty good. I mean, right, one goal outside of the LAFC in, in all competitive matches. Uh, pretty good. Yeah, man. How I said the defense in Yarbrough are really holding it down. By the way, Johnny Russell had a expected goal of zero point one five. And then you go so, expected goal on yeah. target, it's zero zero point zero two, even lower. So yeah, you, so, yeah was, if anything, it drops his expected goals for the season. He was um, completely invisible today, man. He I you only heard him when he got fouled towards the end, really. Yeah, no shallowy next to him. So, you know, they're two guys from last year who combined for thirty goals. They're gonna have to come up with something. Um Yeah, they're I mean they're, feels, Go ahead, go ahead. No, it kind of feels like a different version of the problem that the Rapids are facing. Where it's like, where are these goals going to come from? But the Rapids are making it work, right? They're finding these goals, goals by committee, and um, you know they're just it. Kansas City's going to face a big problem if they can't do that as well. Uh, I think also their m- midfield man was just not that good as well. Um, you were seeing they weren't creating chances; they were getting out muscled. Um, they were they started being very conca cafe towards the game as the game went on. Oh yeah. They started oh, yeah. like they felt the pressure that they couldn't keep possession like they would like. And you started seeing these like very hard fouls like on Jack Price. You saw him go down a couple of times holding his leg. You saw Rubio yep. uh holding his uh, calf too for a while there. They and Rubio is like a false nine, so he plays a lot of the midfield. Um yeah. so you just Lucas kind of started feeling yeah, Lucas came, but Lucas was more like just kind of a he, I feel like he pulled himself sure. more than anything else. Uh, but sure. the other guys that kept going down was a lot of, like, cleats to the upper leg and a lot of them, like, just holding on because they know that was, like, very hard hard tackle on them. Uh, I want to touch on the subs real quick. Um, you saw season debuts from, and correct me here if I miss anybody, uh, Drew Moore, uh, Yappy, and Sebastian Anderson came on for the first time, right? Mm-hmm. And then Shin Yashiki came on as well, as as did Max. So he, he used all five subs. Um, yep. You know, not a ton of time to really tell how they were playing. I thought Yappy had a nice run there in stoppage time. Um, Shin Yashiki was playing with some decent pace and energetic, but it felt a little frantic. But um, where are you feeling with this bench right now, especially with the Wilson injury, the Kata injury, the, um, the Galvan injury? Where, where's your head at with the bench right now? Um, for the most part, the, I, I'm very confident in the bench. Um, the big one, I think it's going to be the Lucas Estevez. He's been the the player. He's been the player to watch. He's been the player that's really been creating a lot on that left wing. Another thing that I want to touch on, I do not like Jonathan Lewis. How he's played the last couple of games. We'll get to that in a minute. But Lucas yeah. being out really does take a threat out that left. Um, yeah, yeah. What do you think? Beta Shore probably slides over there. I think Betasher does slide over there, and I think he's really good at playing that um uh, that pushing a lot, uh, pushing forward kind of role. We also saw Austin Trusty play that left back when uh, Sammy Vines left last year, uh, before Lucas Estevez came in. So I can see Trusty going to the left side and do pushing up a lot more, and trusting yeah. Drew more, or trusting maybe even Sebastian Anderson if because you saw him come in today. Maybe Frazier is seeing something in him. Um, but I think Trusty's going to take over that left side a little uh, more than Betasher is. 
And I think Badisher is going to be uh, commanding that right side when Keegan's going to be one of those center backs. Yeah, that makes sense. And I thought Keegan had a really good game playing playing on that back three. Um, you know, it's honestly the way he kind of plays, you know, it feels like his style doesn't really – he's not like Lucas. He, it feels like he wants to sort of play back and kind of be good yeah. and kind of play as more of an anchor. Um, and so, honestly, sliding over to that, you know, right center back spot might not be the worst thing for him. Um, I think that's going to face if it's game perfectly, honestly, especially with those wing backs going up and down all game. I think he, him being able to expand a little bit more and have a little bit more space there, he'll he'll do great. I have no no qualms with him playing that right center back. Yeah, but um, so we finally saw uh, a set piece, right? We saw the price to Beta Short to to Matt Goal, and I thought there was a couple that looked really well. Uh, early there was that corner that got right on Wallace's head on the backside of the goal, but couldn't finish. Um, I think I think they're really finding their groove on those set pieces. I mean, obviously Price is a surgeon, but I really, you know, you're really starting to see how impactful he can be. Yeah, I mean, they, the most assist from set pieces last year, man. Uh, I think it was just somebody had to start finishing them. He's had a few close ones this year. Uh, even in the first period when you have Lala's in the back and it hits him in the shoulder and it goes flying over the oh. the crossbar. Man. Those are those you, are little things that like, you're just like Price could yeah. have so many assists if we just had you're just like a finish, decent finish, header. Finish, finish. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, it's tough. That's definitely something I think just to keep an eye on as the team gets a little bit in form a little bit better. I think mm-hmm. they'll definitely have a lot more set piece goals coming in. Yeah. And, you know, so now we've we got two home games in a row, two clean sheets, five goal, uh, you know, plus five in goal differential. Now you go on the road again, right? Against the Houston team, you know, you think you'd come in as favorites. Uh, where, where's your head at now going on the road again, where last road game didn't go so great? Uh, Houston's not the same team from last year. I think they've they've actually improved. They actually beat Vancouver 2-1 today. That was just making sure that the score stayed the same. Watched the last few minutes of that today. Um, and again, man, the Rapids are a home team. They do a yeah. great job at coming in, uh, playing at Dick Sporting Goods Park, keeping the back line and the defense uh, just a complete wall, not letting anything go by them. So... I'm a little more skeptical. I think I'd be happy with a draw in Houston. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I can't. I also can see. I can definitely see a world where they go out there and score two goals again because they're getting in form and have more rhythm. They're definitely in good form, and you know, they're. What I've noticed is when the game opens up, they're really able to show that some amorphous defense that kind of plays one way, plays the other, lines up. Even when the game opens up, they're still able to hold that line really well, even with mm-hmm. Wilson out and people playing in different spots mm-hmm. and all over the place. So, you know, that usually defense travels pretty well. Um, you know, can the goals travel? You know, they finally have found a rhythm on offense. Can those goals travel? Yeah. And they've done a really good, and they've done like a really good tr- job as well. Um, the last couple of games of shutting down the best player on the other team. Can they keep that up with a. Mm-hmm. Uh, Probably going to be Quintero, their best player on offense. Yeah, Darwin Quintero yeah, I mean, from America fame. So, like, if he can, if they can shut him down, they they did. Um, Joseph Martinez and Johnny Russell, they're going to have a really good shot, especially because although this team is uh, improved, I don't think it's at the caliber of team that the Rapids are. I mean, right now, see, that's what's crazy is if you take away. I mean, it's only three games in, but you take away that LAFC game, this is one of the better teams in the league, right? I mean, if you're going to have this defense and this goalkeeper and this opportunistic offense, I mean, you got to be happy with where they're at. I mean, I'm really yeah, happy with where they're at. Like, especially, <laughs> let's say they lose 2-1 instead of 3-0. You're feeling a lot better about this team. But that 3-0 yeah. loss just kind of keeps you like, I don't know how good this team really is. Yeah, but you're like, I are get, they a five seed? Are they a four seed? Are they, yeah. uh, you know? And I think if they would have lost 2-1, it it'd still be a loss. A lot of these people would be a lot more adapting and be like, oh, no, this is a really mm-hmm. good team. They'd be a lot more optimistic about where things are heading, especially Absolutely. with Mac coming in and having a great game today. 
having Barrios be that speed demon on the right side, and but still keep a, having a little bit more, um, not being so large, uh, crazy with the ball and just running down the side, being a little bit more precise with his passes and things like that. I think really helps uh, helps bring in perspective where this team could actually be heading, especially if Rubio scoring goals at this point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, man, the noise is loud against you know needing a striker, and Rubio keeps you know two games in a row with a goal. You got you know it's uh, it's about as good as you can ask for. Um, if you were to make one change to the lineup going down to Houston, where would it be? Because to me, you know, you obviously have your struggles with Lewis. Uh, do you maybe think about putting in like a Max or an Andre in there instead, and kind of you know? Keep the keep the offense for offense, like for like. I would definitely go Max Man on the left wing. Um, yeah, why not? Max already like drifts to the left. We've discussed this in all our shows. Max loves playing on the left side. Put him on the left immediately, and I think he makes a great impact, especially because he can drift in and shoot and, and shoot from the long distance. Oh, so yeah. I would take out Lewis and put in and put in Max. I know I know Lewis is like. A fan favorite for some for some people, but I just really don't like his game and how he's fitting in with this team right now. He becomes cool. really invisible, and you just yeah. don't see him near the ball. And when you do, you just see him crossing like as quickly as he can, as, as, or like either he crosses too quickly, or he's uh, or he holds on too much to the ball, and it's just not meshing with his, with his uh, team plays. Yeah, and you know. If you bring him off the bench, you have options, right? You can see where you're struggling throughout the game, and, and mm-hmm. he can bring that, you know, because he does play with really good pace. I thought, I really thought tonight he was going to go off because, uh, you know, for the first half, you know, where I am in the press box, I'm right above that matchup with him and Graham Zusi. And Graham Zusi, who is, you know, oh. AARP, oh. yeah, at least I <laughs> You know, blue blue plate. Got out in a walker and, today, man. Uh, That's what I heard. He, uh, you know, Lewis was burning. I mean, God, they didn't, and they tested it a lot. I mean, you know, they sent probably five, six, you know, balls up that way early, right, and tested it. So he does bring that pace, and so I do think bringing him off the bench can really change the pace of the game, depending on who's struggling and where you're seeing your offense be successful. Mm-hmm. And then Max, man, that creativity, especially if K's starting to break out, if you can have those two on the field at the same time, even if they're not playing directly off of each other, it I just think you open up so much for this offense. And then Rubio is that false nine. You can let Max get up, cross into him up, you know, at the top of the box, and then you really have angles mm-hmm. off to Barrios, back to Max, lay it off for one of the midfielders coming in. Um I don't know, that's probably the move. If you see anything, I don't know if Frazier is gonna change it, but I think He's, Frazier. You know, I think it's three different starting lineups so far. So, um, but I think also Frazier kind of keeps what he knows, and he like yeah. if, if you won two games convincingly, why would he change your lineup? Yeah. Something's working. Yeah. So I mean, I I wouldn't judge him if he doesn't change it, but I would like for him to change it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, no, I think so. And you know, he has it's, it has been three different starting lineups so. Um, you know, it'll be it'll be interesting to see where he goes with that for sure. So, um, you know, we'll see. Uh, any other thoughts you have for the game? My biggest one just talking about Lewis, man. He's been, he's. Yeah. <laughs> I know, like I know people. I don't hate Lewis, man. I actually do like him a lot. I just like yeah. him as a bench player. I like him when, yeah. especially here in, when you're playing at DSG. They're tired. Bring out a speed demon. Just have him attack the left the left wing when everybody like is gasping for air and that works out great but when you're playing him the whole game and he's just not being productive his passing is not being accurate and he just doesn't seem to like be getting where he has to be it just it's frustrating man watching him play well and you just spent a ton of money on max and brought him up and he's been training now for over a month you know it's not at some point he's not like too fresh with the team to get that start and get those minutes and and you've seen Lewis be that super sub before. So at well, some yeah, point, it, I think you have to make that move. Right. And it's super right? strange because Frazier played him against uh Comunicaciones here in Denver. And then yeah. the more and again the, against LA. Yeah, and then in LA and then he w- doesn't play him again. Yeah, now you know he's only I, played about you know 
10 minutes since, yeah. right? So still a little salty with Trading Kellen. Yeah. So, well, yeah, join the club. Uh, <laughs> and I'm sorry you love Jonathan Lewis. I do love him too, man. Just not in the starting lineup. I just want you to know that I think he's a great player. I think he just doesn't mesh well with what the Rapids are doing for the most part. Yeah. I mean, look, Lewis, that finish he had last game was great. Like, great. Um, and the runs he was making early when that game plan was really being implemented against that pretty weak back right side of their back line against for Kansas City. Um, I thought he was really explaining it, but nothing was coming from it, right? Like, the runs were happening and the balls were getting there, and then it was like, okay, where are you laying it off? Who are you getting it to? Um, I just think, you know, like he just said and like we've been talking about, it is time to probably move it back to that super sub and let Max cook, man. The creativity is obvious. And yeah, man, Estevez did a great job of even when he like pulled his hamstring, he stopped Russell in his tracks. And that's when Russell, Russell had to take advantage. Ooh, Russell, man. Tough, tough, tough in KC. That moves them down. I mean, are all done? All the games gotta be done now, right? Yeah. So that puts them probably pretty I mean, the standings. Western Conference, they're, I mean, they're down in 11th right now. Like, and Colorado's in fourth. Yeah. Oh, it looks like Austin and Portland are still playing. Um, hey, what do you know? know? Austin isn't up by five goals right now. Um, <laughs> looks, like they came back to, looks like they came back to earth. Um, I did want to touch on that Real Salt Lake game today. I don't know if you saw that. Um, crazy comeback uh in new england i i honestly including a win- i had a winner in stop- well yeah stoppage course. they had a winner in stoppage um i thought that was probably the result of the day outside of the rapids game um they have now they've gotten you know they've gotten points in every result so it's them and lafc up top seven and then Austin currently has six, but if the results hold, they'll stay at six points and be tied with Colorado on goal differential. Um, Galaxy has six. Portland sitting on five points. Uh, it's pretty interesting so far, man, honestly. Um, Do you think that uh, Ralph Salt Lake is going to try to take the Snow Classical from the Rapids and call the Snow Classical one for them? I mean, they can try, but it's not we all know what's up. Real, yeah. real ones know, you know. <laughs> and yes, Mickey uh, D. Diego Rubio. That's all we need to know. Dude was great today. He's been great. Look, he's been so. great. And you know, I did see some I finally am starting to see the nuance, especially now that he is scoring goals. I think people are really saying, look, we obviously want a DP striker to play with Rubio, off of Rubio. Because because Rubio can play off of one of those guys you don't get, right? Because yeah, exactly. Man, he he is in form. I want to talk about that. Who do you if you had to talk from right now, for the pids. After three games, who do you got? Sorry, you cut out a little bit. Can you repeat that? In form, like who? Who do you is is best in form right now for the pids? Right now, I would probably say Lucas Yarborough and Rubio are probably in the most form so far. Yeah, man, it's really hard to go with anybody else. Maybe Jack Price, just because he's been super stable. True. But that's just that's just True. who Jack Price is. Um, yeah. I think every I defender like, has had their moments where you're like, oh, like, oh, oh. Yeah, especially. They get a little maybe, too far up. They're getting a little too yeah. dribbly. Like, the only one I haven't seen that from is actually Keegan. Like, Lala, yeah, Keegan like, great. yeah, Keegan. But even him, he hasn't, like, popped out of the – you haven't seen him, like, pop out of the screen. Like, you just – oh, yeah, there's Keegan doing his job again. It's not Which, like – you know, if it's you good. hear that defender's name a lot, that is a – you know, it's not a bad thing. Right. Exactly. So, so I'm um, thinking uh, you can't really go beyond Rubio and yeah, and, Lucas, yeah those, he's just so good. I think they, he wasn't as good as the last couple games, but he was still, you know, that assist he had was great. Um, he went from a nine point to a eight point two, and it's like not exactly. as good. Yeah, yeah, dude is still a beast. Not as good, still great, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's really it's you gotta be happy with where this team is at. Exactly, Logan. Yeah, exactly, man. Keegan, you got, I mean, honestly, like, he won't be bad of the match, but I think 
his ability to just slide over and hold down that back three like that with, you know, with Wallace and Chuffy is so impressive. Um, I actually really like that, Nikki. That's a really good. Um, and I think also, I think Matt was saying Kamara, right? Matt Pollard was saying that. Yeah. Um, they uh, Matt Pollard wanted Ole. There's, and Kay, oh yeah. Rev, yeah. Rev, so, but if I if I had my choice of money just to bring in, I'm a big Emekis fan. Go bring in Julio okay. Fridge from Milana FC, man. Atlas oh, FC. Go bring Julio Fridge. Yeah. Big dude can score. He scored, I think, a thousand or a hundred, something like that. I saw in the uh, Emekis in the last like three years, something like that. Go bring him sure. in, man. Julio Fridge would be a great addition to this squad. That's who I would. I agree. If I had a choice, I stole his artist made. I know it won't have been fun. That's that's my dream. I'd love to see that. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Um, hey, speaking of, we got what? Less than two weeks for that USMNT Mexico game, baby. Yeah, that's gonna, it's gonna be... be a good one. It's gonna be we a good be one. Do- we might be doing something special for that. So if you guys are hearing this or watching this, keep an eye out. Hopefully, we can get everything Absolutely. settled. So Absolutely. We yeah, might be having some fun with that too. That. Um. Man, we're close to dropping that new merch item, too, that I can't say yet. Very close. Still waiting on a couple confirmations, but some dope is coming out real quick. Like, real quick. Um, you guys are going to love I mean, it. We got two weeks until that home match with Real Salt Lake. Huge one. So just go down and get at least a point, right? Like, go down and get at least a point in Houston. Come back for a huge, huge home matchup. Especially with uh, Real Salt Lake in form right now. Being yeah, in it's going to be a big one. It's going to be fun, man. It's going to be – by the way, I hit on, my, on all my bets, man. I had a Willie I had a Willy clean sheet, and I'm like, that's going to be – I don't know. I just had a feeling today. Ooh, nice. Yeah, so. I had uh, I had Mac as an anytime goal scorer. I took that earlier this week uh, after talking with Jared about it on the pod. Uh, that's it. I didn't really place a lot of bets today. Today was too many sports games for me to be worried about. Obviously, my boy – United pulled out with the Ronaldo hat trick. You probably hated it. You probably faded them. If I'm, but, uh, I, did, I, I fade United whenever I can. I'll fade United. I know you I did. did. Yeah. I know you did. Then they traded oh, Chicharito. I, I do not care anymore. I mean, how crazy. I mean, come on. That, you got to give it up, though. All no, no, dude. For no, forever. Yeah. That was a wild game, man. It was sick. But, uh, yeah, man, I think that's all tonight. Uh, yes. Out. Ooh. I agree with that one. JJ Macias. I was ta- I um I put that out on Twitter the other day under one of Juaner's posts. JJ Macias is the perfect perfect MLS player. I think yeah, he'd fit great with the Rapids. That's who I want. Great. Po- He's a poacher. JJ Macias in Colorado. Let's do it. I'm talking to you, yeah. uh, Pori. Come on. Yeah, let's go. Get it in here. Um, so I think that'll do it for us tonight, guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, make sure to follow Yahir there, Yahir G underscore Vasquez. Make sure to follow me at underscore underscore Mitchell James. Uh, make sure to follow DVR underscore Rads. Make sure to give a thumbs up right down below the screen, right right there. Thumbs up. Um, buy your shirt from the DMVR locker. Subscribe to DMVR. And uh, we'll be back Wednesday. Do we got a guest lined up? Should we tell them? Keep it a secret. We do. Let's hold off a little bit more we'll just, so, we'll keep just for now. We'll let it out probably maybe Monday or Tuesday, but Monday just or Tuesday. for now. Yeah, yeah. Let's just make sure everything's lined up before we do anything else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Guys, thank you so much. Make sure to follow, like, subscribe, all that, and we'll see you next time. Up the pins.